Certainly we're thankful for the audience that has come here today to worship God in spirit and in truth. It is at this time in our worship that we will uh, commence to do our opening prayer. Would you pray with me? Father God, we thank you so much for just another day. We thank you for health and strength, food, clothes, and shelter. We thank you for saving us by your son's sacrifice and his body at Calvary on our behalf. We thank you, kind Father, most of all, that he rose from the grave and that assures us that one day we likewise will resurrect. Now, Father, we pray that as we prepare to worship you, we pray that we will do it decently and in order, and it is in the name of Jesus that I do ask it all. Let us all say amen. You, Lord, without you, Lord, I can't make it. No, 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 without you, Lord, without you, Lord, without you, Lord, oh, without you, Lord. Yeah. 
scripture readers taken from Matthew. They are 14 chapter, 25 through 33. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. And immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered them and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to Jesus. And when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and called him and said to them, O ye of little faith, why do you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the room came and worshiped, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Walking in sunlight, yeah, yeah. all of my journey, oh, over the mountain, oh, over, over the mountain, mountain yeah. the to the deep yeah. end. Yeah. Don't you know that Jesus has said I, well, the Lord said, I never leave you. A promise, promise divine word, promise that never, never can fail. Oh, 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 heavenly heaven, y'all want to look like you do. Oh, heavenly sunlight, thank you for loving my soul. My soul with his glory and his soul is divine. Oh, no, I never with them, my life. Gotta keep rejoicing, gotta keep on singing his praises Cause my Jesus, my listen, oh, shadows around me And even though there are shadows above me Lord, it never comes to my My Savior, Savior, my God Oh, don't you know that he is the light the Lord can be found Oh, oh, oh God, that's why I'm walking and I'm so close to his side Oh, oh, oh heavenly, heavenly Y'all, there's nothing like this good Oh, heavenly sunlight The keys blood in my soul Blood in my soul With his glory Glory divine So divine Gotta keep on singing his praises to my Jesus, my thing on in the bright sun. I'm ever rejoicing, ever rejoicing. Oh, when I'm pressing my way on to those mansions above. Oh Lord, oh when I'm singing his praises and gladly. Life, 
This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Well, you all, my sermon today, the title is God's Instructions of Love. <clears throat> Again, God's Instructions of Love. This life, you all, is a test, a probationary period, if you will. And Jehovah Jireh <clears throat> does not want anyone to feel it because he loves us so very, very much. So Jehovah has made it an open book test with all the answers provided in the book. Jehovah says, and thou should love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. <clears throat> this is the first commandment. And the second is like namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandments greater than this, these. <clears throat> so what God is saying is if we love him and want to go to heaven, we must keep his statutes and commandments, not just the ones that fit our lifestyle of the moment, you know, make us feel good. This one's okay. Pick this one, pick that one, not this one, not that one. We can't live an unrepentant, rebellious life against Jehovah and gain the glorious rewards of an everlasting life in heaven. God says, if you really, if you really love me, you will keep and obey my commandments. Jesus says, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. If ye keep my commandments. Jesus says, ye shall abide in my love even as I have kept my father's commandments and abided in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that your joy, hallelujah, might remain, that my joy, that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Glory, hallelujah. My question to you is, do you want it? Do you want the joy of Christ? Well, this is not a Burger King, you all. You've heard me say that before. You can't have it your way. God's way is the only way to gain the joy of Christ and the wonders of heaven. The time is, is, is now, right here. And the place is here to gain Christ right here, right now. <clears throat> Why? Because no day is promised unto us. We're planning for tomorrow. We're planning for next week. What is the, how does the song go? Uh, 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 tomorrow, tomorrow never comes. Better choose the Lord today. Well, and my uncle Nathaniel used to say, we're just well enough today, strong, healthy to die. And then comes the judgment. The rewards of heaven or the anguish of condemnation, of eternal punishment, suffering, dismay, hopelessness, and separation from the love of God, from love himself, God Almighty forever. Wouldn't you rather be friends with God for all eternity than to be friends with the world for this short vapor of a life. Well, God says, ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. God says, this is my commandment that ye love 
one another as I have loved you. These things I command you that ye love. <laughs> Do you get it? Do you get it? One another. And this is how we know daily, you all, by experience that we have come to know God, to understand him and be more deeply acquainted with him. If, that's a big word there, if we habitually keep focused on his precepts and obey his commandments, his teachings. Jehovah loves us and because he loves us so much, he gave us all we need in his word to make it to heaven. We just need to look in his book, the Bible. It's an open book test, beloved. Don't you want to A? Don't you want to A? Don't you want to win the race? God says, whoever, whoever says, I have come to know him, but does not habitually keep focused on his precepts and obey his commandments, his teachings, God says he is a liar, a liar. God says, and the truth of the divine word is not in him, but whoever habitually keeps his word and obeys his precepts and treasures his message in its entirety, not just a little here, a little there, but all of it. In him, God says, the love of God has truly been perfected. It is complete and has reached maturity. By this we know for certain that we are in him. Now, whoever says he lives in Christ, that is, whoever says he has accepted him as God and Savior ought as a moral obligation to walk and conduct themselves just as he walked and conducted himself. So let me ask you, is that what we are doing? God in his love has given us all, not some, not a little, but all the keys to heaven. We just need to look in his book. Jehovah Jireh, our provider, says that people who say they are in the light in constant fellowship with Christ and yet habitually hate, hate and work against their brothers. Man, you can hate. Have you been one of those brothers who hate somebody for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years or maybe just a day? He says that you hate or work against your brother or sisters in Christ are in the darkness until now. The one who loves though, the, one, uh, the ones of us who love and unselfishly seek the best for their beloved brothers, their believing and beloved brothers and sisters, <clears throat> live in the light. And in them, there is no occasion for stumbling or offenses. They do not, they do not hurt or cause harm to the cause of Christ or lead others to sin. You say, well, well Christians wouldn't do that. I don't know how many times I've heard Christians take pride in their sinful past. Not be ashamed of it, but want to talk about all oh, what are the conquests they made, all the things they've done. And then they want to tell other young people, well, you know, you got to sow your wild oats before you get married and stuff. So go sow your wild oats. God never told us that. God didn't tell us the fornicate is not to take pride in sin. We should be ashamed of that. See what I'm saying? But those who habitually hate or work against their brothers and sisters in Christ are in spiritual darkness and are walking in the darkness and do not know where they are going because the darkness has blinded their eyes. These people are fooling themselves because, because they haven't 
really truly trusted God. They're fooling themselves, believing they are walking in the light of God. But the reality of, the, of their condition is that they are the walking dead. Yeah. Condemned to suffer for all eternity because they refuse to love God the way he commands them to love him. By truly trying with all of their mind, body, heart, and soul, spirit, and strength to keep all, not some, all of his statutes and commandments. And to love their neighbors and, and in particularly their brothers and sisters in Christ as they love themselves. We need to stop walking around in a daze like zombies from The Walking Dead, mindlessly doing whatever comes to mind, whatever excites our flesh or tickles our fancy. Jehovah, our Abba Father, has lovingly given us statutes and commandments to live by, to, to live a joyous and abundant life. All we have to do is love him enough to follow the instructions that our Abba Father gave us. Jehovah lovingly gives his, his instructions and he, and he lovingly gave his only begotten son to miraculously uh, 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 to lead us to salvation. And he meticulously and lovingly gave us his word, the Bible, to give us everlasting life, protection, guidance, and deliverance from evil, punishment, suffering, death, hell, and eternal damnation. Christianity, my brothers and sisters, in spite of what the world may say, is not a dead religion, you all. The Bible is the key, the way, the Rosetta Stone to an abundant life, a joyous life, love eternal. The Gospels of the Bible are the most provable ancient historical documents known to mankind. The Bible has a 100% prophecy, a prophetic accuracy rate. When the book of wisdom instruction, love, and prophecy. Jehovah's word, the Bible says something will happen. It happens just the way it said it would or will down to the minutest detail. This book, the word of God, the Bible is life. It's life itself. If we want the joy, the blessings, the gifts of, the, of that wonderful, eternal, awesome life that Jehovah promises in, this, in his word, that bliss, that love, that power and peace beyond our wildest dreams to comprehend. We have to fight with all we are and have for it. No matter, no matter how easy or convenient it may seem to go along, to get along, no matter how much our flesh, our families, our friends, our tribe, our society, social norms demand, we conform to this world's sinful ways and desires. We must follow our Abba Father's statutes and commandments, his book of love, the Bible, lest we end up losing everything that is truly worth having and living for and become those people alluded to in Matthew 7, 21, where Jesus says, not everyone who saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth, that doeth my, the will of my father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wondrous works. And then I will profess unto them, 
I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock, and the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not. For it was founded on a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which builded his house upon the sand. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. Ladies and gentlemen, my brothers, my beloved brothers and sisters, don't let anybody or anything fool you. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit or have any share in the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor fornicators, nor adulterers, nor idolaters, nor effeminate, which is the perversion of a man having or showing characteristics regarded as typical of a woman. Nor those who participate in orgies, hmm, menage a trois, okay, or homosexuality, LGBTQ, etc. Now, I'm not saying this to put you down or make you feel bad. I'm saying this because I love you and I want us all to make it to heaven. And these are God's statutes and commandments. You can't do these things and make it into heaven. Okay, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor those who give bribes or take bribes, swindlers, nor drunkards, those who get high or intoxicated, nor revelers, those who criticize in an abusive or angrily insulting manner, whose words are used, don't you know, don't you know, have you been there? Their words are used as weapons to abuse, insult, humiliate, or intimidate. Don't do it. Nor gossips or slanderers. Hmm? Somebody got an itch in the ear, you want to be popular, so you got something to say about somebody, and you're not doing anything to help them, you just want to say something. Be careful. Nor the cowards, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, those who take an innocent life. Those who practice magic arts, uh, sorcery, witchcraft, nor those who practice or cause enmity. Look out now, strife, divisions, jealousy, envy, covetousness. I want your position. I want your job. I'm going to take it. I'm going to get it by hook or crook. The ends justify the means. Be very, very careful. Fits of anger. Nor anyone who loves and practices falsehoods and all liars, those people will not inherit or have any share in the kingdom of God. But their place will be, Lord have mercy, in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. My beloved brothers and sisters, the Lord doesn't delay as though he were unable to act and is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is extraordinarily patient toward us because he loves us. Not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. But, but God will not force you to do his will, to keep his statutes and commandments. Jehovah will not take away your free will. He won't do it. Therefore, the choice of whether we will be with him in paradise or cast into the lake of fire is 100% ours and ours alone. Because there is one thing that cannot be a part of heaven and that is sin. And anyone who lives an unrepentant, defiant, sinful life, rebelling against God's statutes and commandments, 
cannot be a part of God's people or share in their inheritance. You might say, Bobby, why not? You might say, preacher, why can't God be more tolerant? Well, <laughs> well we, we have to remember that heaven is a place with no hurt, no harm, no danger, no more suffering, pain and mourning, no more sickness or loneliness, no more despair or tears of sadness, no more death. But, but if God allowed sin into heaven, all these things will come flooding into heaven along with sin. Just look around you and you'll know what I mean. I'm telling you these things again because I love you. And like our Heavenly Father, I don't want any of us, not one, to be lost. And most of all, God commands it. All of us who have been given knowledge of God have been commanded lovingly to warn you. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 18, God says, When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou giveth him not warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. If we love God and our brothers and sisters, we can't just talk about prosperity teaching and the good times. We have to talk about all the things that we have to do and avoid. For the enemy, you all, the devil, the enemy is at the gate and he seeks to destroy us all. But God has given us his instruction booklet of love, the Bible, to show us the way to protect ourselves, to save ourselves from the enemy at the gate. He has given us the keys to the kingdom of heaven. We just have to use them. Right? Well, I just want to leave you with this. The Apostle Paul wrote, for the wages of sin is death. But. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, Romans 6 and 23. So let me ask you this, will you choose life? Won't you choose Christ right here, right now? Well, you must hear the word to get saved. You've heard God's word today. Jesus came, suffered and died for you so that you may find heaven. God sent his son to suffer and die for you so that you may win heaven. God is. You must believe that God is. Then you must repent. You must turn away from those sinful acts, the, the things you've done wrong to people, because every sin is against God. Then you must confess. You must confess what? Confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ said, if you confess me before man, I will confess you before my Father, which is in heaven. Hallelujah. Ain't that wonderful? And then you must be baptized. Why must you be baptized? I said I love Jesus because God commanded us to do so. So we need to be obedient to God, right? Well, I'm saved already. But are you obedient? And then you will be a part of God's family and he will welcome you in and you will be, you have access to all the promises and all the, the, the blessings of God's word and you will have access to God. So with that being said, I just want to say I love you. And I want us all to get it right. Don't let the world mess you up. Don't equivocate. Study God's word and live God's word and let him bless you. So with that being said, may God bless you and those you love. And if you want to get baptized, call us up, text us, email us. We will make time to baptize you. God bless. <laughs>
I'm not worthy of your matchless grace. You're worthy. church. I'm here today to tell you how you can provide the church your offering even though you're not here. There's three different options for you. The first one is the website, which I'll give to you. It is www.chathamavalonecoc.com. The second option would be to come to the church on Saturday. The hours are from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And in addition to leaving your offering, you also can pick up your communion cup. And the last option would be to mail your offering to the church. And the address is 8601 South State. And the zip code is 60619. And again, just because you're not in church, you still need to come in and make your offering. May God continue to bless you.
Good afternoon. This is the part of our service that is known as communion. Where upon the first day of the week, the disciples come together and break bread in remembrance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is commanded in Acts 20 and verse 7. I will read for you Matthew 26, verses 26 through 29. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. I've just read for you Matthew 26, verses 26 through 29. Let's bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, God, for your darling son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Jesus, for that day on Calvary's cross. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood and the water that came from your body as your side was pricked. And it wouldn't, if it wouldn't have been for that moment in time, our debt would not be paid in full. Thank you, our Lord and Savior, for paying our debt of sin for mankind, past, present, and future. Lord, we pray and we ask and hope that this service is pleasing and memorable in your eyesight. Thank you, Lord, for your body. This prayer, we pray to you. In your darling sons, Jesus Christ's name, let the redeemed of the Lord say, Amen. Now we will take communion. Most is gracious and heavenly Father, sits high and looks low, hallowed be thy name. Father, we come before you, Father, thanking you for what our ears have heard and what our eyes have seen, Father. We pray that your word will be indwelled in us, Father, that we may take it out into the world and put it in practice, Father, that all will see, Father, that we are your children, Father. Help us continue in love and unity and the bond of peace, Father. We pray that you keep us in your care, Father, always watching over us, Father. In Jesus' name, we humbly pray and thank you. Amen. Saints of God, come on, put those hands together. Let's praise him today. Let's praise him. Yes, there's just something about Sunday morning. Well, said I can't on, wait all day to Sunday morning. Sunday morning. To sing and shout and praise the Lord. Well, Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Gather together. Church in one accord. Praise the Lord. Something about that day, yeah. That it's gotta be the law. Oh, I know you get a little worried about your bills sometimes. But Jesus said he'll make a way out of no way. Wow, I don't worry about my bills. Sunday morning, no bill collectors knocking at my door. Sunday morning, Sunday morning, I'll be at church, be at praising Lord. the Lord, with my mind on Jesus, on Sunday morning. 
One more thing I want to tell you. Oh, Y'all ain't going to believe this now. now. Listen, some folks don't go to church, go to church. on Sunday morning. Stay at home. Some home. even go fishing. Oh, they don't know. They don't know. On Sunday, Sunday morning. They just, just don't, don't know. Just what they're missing. She's oh, a Thank you. 